After wrapping up episode six with Kevin from Bagelgram, I headed over to the Giddy Goat for some coffee. Upon speaking with the owner, I realized I was about to drink more than just any old cup of coffee. Unfortunately, the original footage was lost, so I decided to make a return visit. Carson was busy this time around, so he left me in the hands of an all-star barista for a behind-the-scenes look at the Giddy Goat. Hey, I'm Parker. Welcome to the Giddy Goat. Let me show you your map. Thank you. Of course. So, kind of daunting for a coffee shop. Bigger than most would expect. Um, first thing we walk in, we have our roasters. So we roast all of our coffee in-house. Um, everything's made. We try to get it out to the public in about three to seven days. Everything's super fresh. Unlike Starbucks and other places like that. This thing, I wish we could like show you what it looks like when we're actually roasting it. Um, what is this thing? But it's super, this is a coffee roaster. Like the biggest one you could ever get. So we have, this is a 50 pound, that one is a 25 pound, and then we have a little one in the middle over there that's a one pound. It's just for show pretty much, we don't really make anything with it. We started off making probably, I would say, five pounds of coffee a week. And now we're doing a hundred, at least. So definitely some growth there. A lot of people don't know coffee beans are actually green. So these beans are is what is what are in all of these bags right here that we get shipped from all sorts of countries all over the place. Um, so the beans start off green, go into the roaster, roast them around. It's like a circular thing. You pull this out, check the beans like that, and then this is how they get that like brown color that's everyone used that everyone is used to when you see like a coffee bean. So this is how it starts in these bags. We roast them up, and then I'll take you this way. Oh, that's Calder also. He's uh, the owner, I'm just kidding. But he's the most important employee we have. Um, so this is the tiny one I was talking about just for show, but it's a very expensive show. Okay, right over here is where the coffee comes to life. So this is what the beans look like after they've been roasted. This is what normal people would imagine when they think coffee bean. This is how we make our drinks. All the beans that you saw, the green, all went, goes through all the roasting, all the processes, and comes in here. Everything starts with espresso. This is called tamping. Make sure it's nice and pressed. Boom. I'll go ahead and make a latte so we have to froth milk for that. So milk frothing is definitely the most daunting thing to learn when you're starting off. Um, it's real easy to burn yourself at this job. Got some battle scars for sure. Alright. Write that down. So here we got your espresso shot. Now the milk meets the coffee. So a new thing we just got into that we all have the best time playing with are these little stencils. So say like a kid comes and gets a hot chocolate, we'll take our cocoa powder and just like make a little smiley face on it. I hear you have a nitro cold brew. We have a nitro cold brew, we do. And we have a nitro tea, which people also love. So this might give you a headache. That's what it looks like on the inside. Um, not as complicated as it looks. Pretty much we have our concentrated coffee in these bins right here labeled. Here we go again with those 400 numbers. So remember what 412 would be? The temperature? Like, Medium roast? Yeah, there you go, okay. Um, yeah, so Brazil, Colombian, Costa Rican, perfect for cold brew. Um, pretty much got them hooked up to these things that also pumps water out of um, the refrigerator behind me. 
and nitrogen also is getting pumped through these at the same time, which makes the cold brew a lot smoother, which is what like you can't get just from like regular cold coffee. Right on tap. And then you're gonna have a little head also. And you can see the nitrogen bubbles kind of cascading down. So that's just the nitrogen settling. You'll see it kind of get its color once the nitrogen goes up to the top. And it's it'll cascade for a little bit and then once it's set it'll turn into that brown, dark brown coffee color that everyone's used to. Yeah, it's kind of cool to see it go from uh, like light liquid cord sort of thing and like almost ombre down. It's like I never thought coffee would be could be so pretty. So we have a thing here, it's called coffee of the day. Just like a drip, simple drip coffee. Make it nice and easy for people who don't get like lattes, mochas, all this crazy stuff. Um, so we like to keep it simple that way. So we have two blends. We have a light and a dark. And then the light one, the origin is Costa Rican. And then the dark is a Guatemalan and Papua New Guinea blend, which is the dark. And um, we have all sorts of, this is like all of the different beans we have in the origins. We got Rwandan, Costa Rican, Kenyan, um, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Guatemala, all, anything you could imagine, we have it in a bean form. What's this up here? So this is actually how we got the name Giddy Go. Uh -huh. This is the story of the Giddy Go. So that's where Giddy Go comes from. It was a bunch of goats by a fire, drinking coffee, getting giddy. So we, so we roll with that. So we do have like baked goods, we do have empanadas, and we have a guy up in the kitchen um, from Argentina that makes these empanadas and it, they're just insane. This is definitely a good empanada destination besides coffee as well. So, I can take you upstairs. We just recently opened a bar, a wine and beer bar. So that is up here too. You, before that opened, we just kind of had it as a lounge spot, just another place for people to sit, do their work, stuff like that. But it's becoming a party spot now because we have this beautiful thing called a bar. We got our kitchen back here actually. You have a nice people through there. So that's Pal, he's slicing some peppers it looks like. And in the back's Tony, he's the one that He's a magician when it comes to the empanadas. This is the outside patio upstairs. We have a little dog park back there that we try to keep fenced in just for people. We get a lot of customers coming in just like out walking around the neighborhood with their dogs, kids, whatever. So we, we decided it would be a cool idea to make a little fenced-in gate for like dogs, families to hang out in the shade. We do actually have a really cool mural on the side of the building. Have you seen that? I'm not gonna show it to you. This is our little outside seating area for people with pets, kids children, all of that. So, this mural, I didn't even realize was on the side of this building till like two months after I started working here. Um, so our thing here is the shaka. Carson likes to do this a lot. Um, and it stands for all that. Aloha, right on, thank you. Hang loose, see you soon. We like to keep it super like laid back, positive vibes here. This beauty. So, that, those hands are Carson's hands, the owner. They look like grandpa hands, but he's only 27, so no one would know. Um, and he's holding our good old cup of coffee. We got the firefighters right next to us. They like to come in early morning, give them a couple cups of joe for free. And there's the goat right there getting all giddy. Let's see. Where do you guys get your coffee from? Everywhere. African beans are a big thing. Um, most of our beans are African. 
Yeah, we get them from all over the place. I mean, like, I never knew coming in here that Ethiopian coffee had fruitier undertones. And so I was not a coffee drinker at all when I got here. Like, was so against coffee, hated it. And I've learned to like taste undertones in coffee and like weird stuff like that, something I would have never imagined. There's a lot to it, that's for sure. A fun fact is that, and I had no idea about this, and most people that come in have no idea, but the lighter the roast of a coffee bean is, the more caffeinated it is, which kind of like seems like the opposite, like you'd think darker is like, you know, more caffeinated. Yep. On the screen? Yeah. So we can like show them kind of what it looks like. There you go. Yeah. So these... this. I'll let you walk through it. Thanks, Carson. Yeah. How are you guys doing? These lines you see here are the levels and the temperatures of the coffee beans as they're going through the roasting process. So you see that word drop? That's when it starts. So that's when the beans come from here and they drop onto this surface. We go by 400 to 410 is gonna be a light bean, 410 to 420 is medium, and then 420 and above is dark. So one of them is the lighter roast, one is the darker roast. Mm -hmm. Can you guess which one? <laughs> <laughs> which is which? This is lighter, this is darker, and you can see and these beans are a little bit shiny. That's gonna be some of the oil that's, oh, that starts to come out once they've been roasted for that much longer. So there's a big difference in just the amount of time you keep the beans roasting and how they look, how they taste, all of that stuff. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. So it's crazy, I'll do this comparison too. Like you see this behind the counter, but over here it starts with this. So green coffee beans to brown. Most people don't even know that coffee is really green. Um, so that's why like when they come back and they see the roasters and they see like the whole process, it's super cool to see how we go from this to some like a latte with like all these flavors, mochas, all that, and it really just starts off super raw and simple. And that's the first thing Carson showed me actually when I came in here and he's like, have you ever seen like real coffee beans? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I've seen real coffee beans. Like, duh, hasn't everyone? He's like, no, like real green coffee beans. And I was like, what do you mean green coffee beans? He's like, well, real coffee beans are green before you roast them or do anything to them. And so that blew my mind. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Same place. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Is that good? That was great. No, was it really? Special thanks to Carson and Parker. We'll leave you a link for the Giddy Goat in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in South Carolina.